turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around, God turn it around. I'm gonna sing with you guys. What? I'll sing you with you all. I know, I like it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Good. Is everybody excited to ready to worship God this morning? Awesome. Hey, I just have a word this morning. While I'm coming in this morning, I just have a word for someone here this morning. The word is, you probably hear this morning, you felt like that God forsake you. That God already left you. And He wanted me to tell you, no, He's not leaving you. And He's right there with you. And if you're here this morning, I just want to tell you that, that this hope is still there. That God is still with you. Whatever the lies of the enemies, don't believe that. That is a lie from the enemies. That God is still there and God is your hope. Amen? Amen. And so I just want to think about these two words here. Praise and worship. Do you know that praise is one of the weapons of our warfare? Praise is one of the weapons of our warfare. In any time that we're not willing to praise God, then you're telling the enemy, he says they have the access, come and tell you what you need to do. And worship, the two differences between these two here, praise 
it is one of the warfare that we use in worship. It's the love expressed. It's how you express your love towards God. That's the reason why when you come before God and you lifting up your hands, you kneel on your knees, that means you telling God, this is how much I love you. Amen? So we're going to come in tonight, this morning, and we're just going to praise God with all of our hearts, and we're going to give Him worship that He deserved this morning. Can we just lift up our hands and pray this morning? Father, we thank You. Lord, we welcome Your Holy Spirit in here. Lord Jesus, you are welcome. Be enthroned in our worship. Be enthroned in our praise. Lord Jesus, nothing else be exalted in this place but the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we invite you, Holy Spirit, come and minister into our hearts, into our soul. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
coming your way, but I do know that our God sleeps in storms. He does not worry about them at all. And so this morning, let's just put our faith in the one person that can carry us through anything. Amen? Amen? He is faithful. I just love this bridge, and I want to sing it over you one more time because it's just been ringing in my heart. Rain came when Blue, my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it through. Rain came when blue, but my house was built on you. I'm safe. With you, I'm gonna make it through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Father, I pray over every house today. I pray that solid ground for them, Father God. I pray, Lord, if they have never put their foundation on you, I pray that today, Father, they would find that safety in your presence, that peace with you to rest in you, God, no matter what is coming, no matter what is happening. Father, I pray that you would give your people more faith today than they've ever had before. I pray, God, that their faith would rise in who you are and your steadiness and your ability to hold them your ability to keep them, your ability to provide, God, your ability to heal, your ability to do miracles. God, we just give you all the glory and honor today. And we praise you because you are our faithful God. You are a faithful, faithful Father, a firm foundation for us. You're my solid rock. You're my solid rock, Jesus. There's no one I'd rather walk through life with than you, Jesus. Come on, sing, my hope is built. My hope is built. He's Christ 
Dressed in his righteousness alone And faultless stand before the throne He's Christ alone Cornerstone The weak made strong In the same Just wanna speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. And I just wanna speak. Every dark addiction starts to break in his name. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name
know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I speak Jesus. Can we lift his name? Jesus, we love you so much. Jesus, it's about you. Every song that we worshiped with is a declaration of your goodness and your faithfulness. We love you. Let it be about you. It's not about sounding pretty. It's about lifting and exalting the name of Jesus. Amen. God reminded me yesterday, my, my son sent me a picture. Um, he was walking by a lake there in Redding, and uh, I said, Show me that tree again, because God began to stir this word up I'm about to share with you. And he pushed pause, and he, I said, take a picture, send that to me. So this is the tree. He's walking by the water, and this tree with all these exposed roots. And there's so many different roots leading deep. And I would say that's a smart tree planted by the water, right? <laughs> but God began to stir, and he goes, this is what it looks like spiritually that with people that will plant themselves by my living water. You see, this tree's been through some stuff, been exposed through some storms, some heat. See, there's roots on the backside of that tree that we can't see. That tree ain't going nowhere. Here's the, here's the scripture, Jeremiah 17. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out his roots by the stream and does not fear when he comes. For it leaves remain green, and, it's, and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. You may not think your roots are getting deeper, but every time you position yourselves like right here in the presence of God, your roots are growing deeper. And you may think there's nothing on your tree that's good, but God says differently. He says you will bear fruit, you will not cease to bear fruit if you stay planted by water. Well, the Bible refers to water many times as the flowing of the Holy Spirit. When you position yourself in a corporate setting where the Holy Spirit's welcome, or in your quiet time with the Lord, when you welcome the Holy Spirit and you're, you're ushering in the flowing of water, take a look here. This is Galatians 5. Because this is the type of fruit that you'll produce. It says this, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, gentleness, and self-control. You're not going nowhere. I don't care what storms are coming up against you. We say in the name of Jesus, you will be producing fruit as long as you plant yourself by the water. Just a word for somebody that needs to hear that. I think all of us need to hear that. If you're going through something discouraging, I want to say stay planted. Position yourself for the flowing of the Holy Spirit in your life. We know that water makes things grow. Father, I just thank you for a, a church that welcomes your presence. Father, so Holy Spirit, would you just continue to pour through us this morning? During the message, Lord, would you, as water flows through things, it often carries away debris. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you would carry debris in our lives that does not belong there, hurts and pains. And, Father, you'd make those roots go deeper. So I pray for an exchange during this message. Things in our life that need to be gone and deeper roots in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give God a clap of praise. Amen. God is faithful and he's good. Hey, turn to your neighbor. Say hi to somebody. Say hi to three or four people. Get to know people. All right, LifeWay, welcome this morning. We're glad to see you. I know you're glad to see me. All right, moving on. We are glad to see you. 
we're glad to share with you and continue uh, to teach in this area that we've been talking about in what we, t we like to call Freedom Ministries, Foundations of Freedom. And last week we talked about identity. We wanted to make sure that we started there because everything else flows from there. Are you getting that? Are you seeing that? And so this week we're going to move into speaking about the kingdom of God. And so before we do that, I'm going to open us in a prayer. I'm just going to ask you to open your hearts as I pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you're present, that your spirit is active. And I pray that you would just move on our hearts today. As we open them to you, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let what you desire happen. Lord, as we surrender our hearts to you, as we turn our attention only to you, do what you do. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before I turn Tanya loose on you guys, <laughs> what I want to do is share a scripture with you. We talk a lot about the kingdom. You'll hear us speak about the kingdom in all the messages from here on out. And the reason we do that is because Jesus spoke about the kingdom. That was the central theme of his ministry, was sharing and bringing the kingdom to those who didn't know. So in Matthew 4, 17, that's our scripture of reference. It says here that from that time on, Jesus began to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. You see, Jesus, just before this, had positioned himself, much like our pastor just said, with his father in complete obedience. In a few passages before this, he's with John the Baptist. And he comes and he says, I need to be baptized. And John doesn't understand that. Because he's seeing things from his perspective, mm -hmm. a worldly view. But Jesus says, no, let this be done. Because this is what my father wants. Mm -hmm. And so then he baptizes him. And as you know, the Holy Spirit comes and descends like a dove, it says. And then leads Jesus. Catch that, the Holy Spirit leading Jesus. And he goes out into the desert and... I won't share all that story, but it's after all of that has taken place that Jesus begins his ministry, mm -hmm. and he begins to preach. I think a lot of times we think about Jesus' ministry as him just going around, healing people, delivering people. Jesus was a preacher Amen. because he needed to share the truth of the kingdom. He was proclaiming the kingdom of God. Amen. And oftentimes he would do that through parables. And in the beginning of those parables, he would start with a phrase like this, the kingdom of God is like. And then he would begin to compare what the kingdom of God is like to something they would understand. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, he would always finish by saying this, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Praise God. I pray this morning you have ears to hear. That your spirits are awakened by the words that Jesus says. Mm -hmm. And that as he uses us, it truly brings truth into your life and you receive it. You see, today we're talking about the very things that Jesus came to offer the entire world. A new way of living. You see, the kingdom is spiritual. And when we talk about that, we, often, we all understand the concept, right? A kingdom must have a king. That's right. And in your life, you must surrender to that king. This is how the kingdom operates in your life and in mine. Amen. Those who willingly submit to the king and God's authority... They experience all the benefits of living in that kingdom. Mm -hmm. But listen, if you defy that, 
if you refuse to let go of the things that you've held on to for so long and surrender those things to the king, you're going to live on the outskirts. Not in a place of safety, but in a place where the enemy can attack, steal from you, rob from you, take from you what should be yours. And so this is what we're talking about. Jesus made it very plain that his kingdom was not of this world. John 18, 36 says this. And this is when he's about to be crucified. And he's speaking to the Roman government. And he tells them, my kingdom's not of this world. If it were, my servants, Peter, <laughs> with his sword, <laughs> he would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. Let's make it more clear. In Luke 17, 21, he says this, Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. His kingdom is more than we can just grasp with our mind or experience walking around on this earth. And it's not something that we do, but it is something we receive. Amen? Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is the presence and the power of God in Christ. You see, the Holy Spirit will move in and he will overwhelm those things that are overwhelming you. As we live our lives and surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, as Bobby was speaking, as we walk with him through that, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, to experience him. The kingdom of God, as scripture has told us, is within us. Romans 14, for the kingdom of God is not of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John 16, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in fellowship with you. You see, you and I, we are created for kingdom culture. Kingdom living, not this world's culture, not the culture of our family, but kingdom culture. The New Testament is full of this. He speaks of the kingdom of God. You see, God placed Adam on earth so that he might have dominion over the earth, right? Much in the way that God had dominion over God's kingdom, the fall of Adam and Eve happens in Genesis chapter 3. This did not mess up God's plan. We see that God swoops in redemptively, offering the first animal sacrifice to cover his creation. He wasn't caught off guard. God is not caught off guard by our mistakes. He is a redempting, loving God as we turn to him. And then he comes in one more time with the final perfect sacrifice, his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Him who knew no sin carried all of humanity's sin upon him. Whether you would choose him or not, he bore the weight of every person's sin. So if you don't appropriate that, if you don't surrender your life to Jesus, he still paid for it. He has still already purchased your freedom on the cross of Calvary. He is the way. Jesus is our forever covering, and he is the way that we enter in. You see, there's this common phrase that we see throughout the New Testament, like I just said, and it is repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if we're not careful and we just brush over that, we all have our own ideas and definitions of what repent really means. And so I want us to pause and I want us to take a moment to dive into the definition of what repent really is. The Greek word for repentance is metaneo, which means to think differently afterwards. The Hebrew definition 
for repentance is teshova, which means to return. Return to what? Remember last week we were talking about how Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the garden with their creator, that God was their very source, everything coming to them and in them and through them. There was perfect harmony. We are called to return to communion with a loving father. Repent. Change the way that you think afterwards and to return, return to him. Like we said already, but we're going to repeat it again, Matthew 4, 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus is telling us to change the way that we perceive reality. To change the way that we see, the way that we do things. Because right now, the kingdom is at hand, and it is full of power and peace. We all will think differently when we begin to see from his perspective, not ours. You know, I have gotten pregnant my senior year in high school. And I remember after that, I just wanted to make things right. I remember, like, let's hurry up and get married because then maybe I'll be right. And the harder I tried to make things right, it just didn't work. It wasn't enough. And then my sweet baby was born, Garrett, and he he had colic, and it was just a really hard time for me. And I remember feeling like I was losing my mind. And then one morning, I was trying to comfort and soothe my baby with his high-pitched skrill and and his stiff little body. And I remember as I was patting his little bottom and, and rocking him, I looked to the door, and the door was moving, like maybe in a dream, but I wasn't dreaming. And I remember in that moment, I began to cry out to God from everything in me. And I remember telling him, do you see me? Do you see me? I'm like, I'm going crazy for real right now. Like, I don't know what to do. I remember telling him, I don't care what you do with me. You can put me in a crazy home. That's okay. I just need you to move. I need you to do something because I can't do it anymore. I'm lost. Do you see me? I need you to do something. And I remember the the atmosphere in the room began to shift, and and my screaming baby was quieting, and I remember having this thought, oh, it's working. (laughs) So I prayed harder. I can't do it without you. There's no way. I need you. And then all of a sudden, I felt this warmth, and and it began to move up my feet and and up my legs. And at that point, I looked down, and, and my baby was sound asleep, pressed against my chest. And I remember in that moment thinking, oh, this is where I go. This is what I do. No, this is who I am. This is where my help comes from. You see, I knew I couldn't do it without him. Before this, I was trying to do it on my own. I was trying really hard, and I was taking my actions And I was giving them to him. But I wasn't giving him all of me. You see, Jesus desires all of us. I thought differently after that encounter. Meta nail. I to show about I returned. I returned what? I returned to Jesus Christ as my source. He became my strength. He began, though, he began, he began to walk this thing out with me that when things got rough, I began to see through his perspective what he said about that. And when I didn't have the strength, he began to show me how to grab hold and hold on for life because it's been a radical, awesome ride with him ever since. And I have been able to do things that I never could have done if I didn't have that exchange. You see, this This testimony of mine, that's what repentance is. And it is a beautiful gift. Praise God. What a testimony. 
so true. You know, the reality is, is that the way Tanya is speaking about seeing that change that she experienced can sometimes seem so foreign to most of us. And there's a reason for that. We talked about it last week about the fall of Adam and Eve, and we want to touch on it again and just kind of bring you to that place of helping you see that Adam and Eve in the garden, they had a very unique way of seeing. They saw the spiritual and the physical aspects of things as one. You see, because their source was the Father. And by the Spirit, He helped them see the way things really are, the way He really made them to be. And so I want to talk about that and then contrast that to the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees get a really bad name. And most of us have the idea that Jesus hated the Pharisees. In actuality, he loved them. He was coming to them. He was revealing himself to them. He was bringing the kingdom and the reality of that kingdom to them. The problem is, is that they had a way of knowing the scriptures. Listen, they were devoted. They spent time in the word that most of us would never do. And yet, out of their lives came death and destruction. Because they lacked the one thing they truly needed. And that was the life that Jesus was bringing. He said to them, you know, you search the scriptures, thinking that in them you'll find eternal life. But it's these scriptures that speak to you about me. And yet, you won't turn. And you won't come to me so that I can give you life. Can I say to you today, some of you, most of us in this room, not very much different. Won't, re won't turn. Won't let go of our way of being and thinking, what we've experienced in this world, to just receive what he has. To exchange that truth and life that he has for what you've connected to for so long. You see, it's a product of the fall. And it's okay. But we need to understand that Jesus came to solve that very problem. To reconnect us to him, the source of life, so that we can actually see things correctly. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, he didn't just come and save you just so you would avoid hell and go to heaven. You see, there's a blueprint in the heart of God for each and every one of us. It's the identity that he's planned for who you are. And just like that scripture I shared last week, there are good works, Lisa, for you to walk in. And they're not your idea, but they're his plan. And if you'll just surrender just the way that Jesus did, he's such a great example of the life and the way that we can walk in partnership with God in complete obedience and surrender. If you're willing to do that, to lay down your will, he will partner with you. And he will share all the benefits of his kingdom with you. John 10.10 10 says this. The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life. You see it? That they would have it more abundantly. And in John 14, 6, he goes on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no one coming to the Father except through me. Praise God. You see, 
Just like the Pharisees, you may have a lot of knowledge about the scriptures. You may even have ideas about what is good and what is evil. But the reality is, if you walk around with that knowledge, you may do some good things. You may avoid some bad things. But those will not bring life. Jesus wants to bring life to us today. Because listen, when we are filled with life, we take that life everywhere we go. It exudes out of us. And it spills over onto this broken world. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're designed to do. Amen. 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 So good. All right. We want to look now at, at the story of the woman at the well. Jesus brings a lot of revelation for us through this story. And so I'm going to put up the scripture. It's a long little bit, but I want to read it. You know, the word does not return void. And so we're going to take time today in the word. Is that okay with you guys? Amen. Yeah, let's do it. All right. John 4. It says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then will you get this, that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as his sons and his livestock? Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of living water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said, You have well said, I have no husband. For you've had five, and the husbands, five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband, and that you have spoken truly. Jesus said, if you knew who I was, you would ask. And so he's basically saying in this moment, it's an invitation for her to recognize, to see that the kingdom of God is within arm's reach. And so she asks Jesus for this living water, right? And Jesus says, go, get your husband. Now, it may sound like he is telling her no, but in reality, what Jesus is saying is he's saying, go get your source. Go get that thing. You see, she did not realize in that moment but Jesus did. Jesus discerned a deeper truth, a deeper need within this woman at the well. You see, her knowledge, her experience had taught her that her security, her resource would come from men. That's all she knew. She's not yet understanding who Jesus really is and was in that moment. So she responds, I, I don't have a husband, right? He's not shaking his finger at her. He is gently, lovingly pressing on that thing, showing her through the power of the Holy Spirit what had been her source, what had been her security, what had become all too familiar to her. And he's saying, go get that. Bring that to me. Through the revelation, Jesus was inviting her to recognize that he was offering her. To exchange what she had had for what he has to give. Jesus invites each one of us today. 
each one of us. Jesus says, if you knew who I was, you would ask. Like Bobby said earlier, the kingdom of God is not something that we fulfill as Americans. That we, it's so hard sometimes to get that through our head. It's not what we do. It's not what we fulfill. It's what he did and he fulfilled and we receive the Holy Spirit, God coming to you, working in you, and then through you. The Spirit of the living God comes to you. He begins to minister to you. He begins to work things out on the inside of you, healing things inside of you that maybe you didn't even know were there. And then it begins, that healing begins to ebb through you. And healing begins everywhere you are because you give away what you have, whether you realize it or not. Jesus has come to reconnect us. Mark 1 says, Jesus announced, or John announced, sorry, someone is coming soon who is greater than I, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here. Thank you, Jesus. And I know who Jesus is. Man, I know who he is. You know why I always get to do this story? Because I was the woman at the well. And I know what it's like. And he wants you to encounter him today in such a real way. That we don't leave here today just checking our box that we've gone to church. No. But we encountered the true living God and we are not the same. We are not the same. And Jesus is inviting us today. Just as he invited the woman. Will you pray with me? Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Jesus, I thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. I thank you that it is by you that the Holy Spirit came. Father God, I thank you for your only son. And Spirit of God, I thank you that you never leave us and you never forsake us. And it is for this reason that I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and earth are named, that Jesus would grant us, no, Jesus would grant you, that Jesus would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in your inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart. That through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That you would be filled with the fullness of God. Holy Spirit fullness. Now to him. Now to you, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done. You are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that I ask or think. According to the power that works in me, I ask, I cry out to you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you would sustain every person here with Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, that they would never forget the healing power of Jesus' love. Holy Spirit, would you fall on your people that we would never forget the love of Jesus. Holy Spirit, that is, your, that is what you do, that you can and you take us to Jesus. And so we come before you now.
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence in this place. Would you come and baptize us in your love? And in this place of love and adoration that Jesus has for each one of you. We say, what is your source? I don't want a church answer here. What is your source? What is the first thing? What is it that you go to? What's your first thing? When your world comes crashing down. When the unexpected happens. If it's Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Lord. But the reality is, for so many of us, it's not. It's our spouse or shopping, numbing ourselves online. It could be drugs or alcohol. It could be pornography. There's so many things that have become our source. And just like Jesus wasn't pointing his finger in accusation at her, he was coming in love saying, go get that thing. Because he had the power to exchange it. What is your source? So in an act of worship and just surrender and symbolically, if you would just picture that thing and you would just open your hands up in front of you and extending that to the Lord. And if you desire to just be baptized in the love of Jesus today, to exchange your source for his. Just like when he showed me as a, a teenage mom that he could be all of that for me. I haven't walked perfectly in that. But he always brings me back to it. And so as we do that, if that's you today and you desire to go deeper with him. You desire to encounter his love. I just want you to repeat out loud with me. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Jesus. Please baptize me in your spirit. Yes, please baptize me in your spirit. If you want to be baptized in the power of Jesus and his love, say it out loud. Don't be ashamed. Please baptize me in your spirit. I pray to God there's more of you that want the spirit of the living God in this church than what I'm hearing. If you want it, don't be ashamed in here. If you're ashamed in here, how are you going to be How are you going to walk out there? Father God. Oh God. Baptize us in your spirit, Jesus. I desire to be filled. If you desire to be filled, just tell him, I desire to be filled. In Jesus' name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. He is so worthy. He is so good. God completes the good work that he starts in each one of us, and I, I pray whether it's a big flame that you leave with today or it's something that just got started, that the power of God will continue to blow on that. Revival is breaking out in our country, and we so desperately need the fire of God in each one of us. And I can't do your part, and you can't do mine. So I just want to encourage you with that. Stoke the fire. Fan the flame. He's a good God. He's so worthy. Yes, he loves you so much. So we're going to do what we always do. We're going to end in worship, and we're going to worship a mighty king. We're going to have the prayer team up front. If you need prayer over anything, we just invite you to come on up. Yeah, Tanya, if you don't mind, yeah. I want to share something real quick as we open up this time for prayer. And I want to see you respond if you need to. Last week I talked about my, I shared my story about Christian and I kind of alluded to it at the end, it was several years later. But when we talk about repentance, and Tanya mentioned revival, revival comes only after repentance. 
And some of us need to lay down some things. Well, for me, several years later, I needed to acknowledge to my wife and the Holy Spirit, I was just stuck. He, he was ministering to me, but I, I couldn't move beyond where I was. And he led me to, to just share with my wife, who had not yet known Jesus, that she really hadn't seen Jesus in me up to that point. But I repented. And I came to her and I confessed. I said, honey, you don't know me. But I want you to. And I told her, I said, I must follow Jesus. I must. And I remember, she's so cute, she said, what's going to happen? I said, I don't know. She said, are you going to get weird? Maybe. <laughs> so, but all I know is I've got to follow him. And I want you to come with me. For some of you in this place, there are things you've held on to. That you've, you haven't repented. You haven't brought it. You haven't confessed. And so we're going to have people here to pray with you. Bring it. Repent. Confess it. Get rid of it. And step into what God has for you. Amen. Okay, guys. Would you stand with me? God, we need you today. We need you. I have this thirst. Only you can satisfy my heart it burns with an all consuming fire. I search and see, but your
Jesus, we desperately need you. Whether we're going through a storm or not, that does not change the fact that we desperately need you, Lord. Father, Lord, let us be reminded that every time we meet you, Father, that exchange takes place. You take things away in our life that don't belong there, and you have the power to give us things and remind us of our true identity in you. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're a God of redemption. <laughs> you bought us back, and you redeem us. It doesn't matter what this world says about us or what things look like in our life, because we serve a king, and the king's kingdom is redemption. So we come to you today. We say thank you, Jesus, for your great love over us. We thank you for the word that you spoke to us. We thank you for worship, Lord, that you joined us in worship as we exalted your name. We love you so much. Let's give God a clap of praise for his goodness. Amen. God says he's amazing. He's powerful. He loves you so much. Hey, what a great morning. We've got a couple of announcements for you. First of all, if this is your first time here, we're just so excited that you're here. Right in front of you, there's a communication card. If you could take a second, fill that out and drop it on the uh, offering and tithe boxes or in the hallway. We're super excited you joined us today. Also, we have, a, we, have a, we have an event coming up in March called Fuel the Fire. And I'm telling you, it's, it's um, March 3rd and 4th, I believe. And yes, and you can scan it right there. But it's going to be in a powerful, powerful time. You will go there one way and you will come back totally different. I promise you, I, I want everybody to be able to go. It's in Oklahoma City at my buddy's church, Destiny Church. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. I, I really hope you can make uh, time to go to that. Also, parents, we have baby dedications coming up February 19th. So you can go to our Lifeway Kids page and, uh, and get signed up for that. Invite Grandma and Grandpa. We want to take some pictures. It's going to be a great time as you dedicate your kids to the Lord. Amen. And then today, right after church, we're going to have the, the Super Bowl potluck. We have tons of food. Tons of food for you. So if you didn't bring something, don't worry about it. We brought a lot of food for everybody because you know it's not really about the food. It's about the fellowship. We just get to eat, but I get to eat with friends and get to know people, right? You didn't, God didn't create you to be on your own. That's why he sent the disciples out in groups and pairs, right? Jesus didn't need the disciples, amen? He called them to come do the work, and then he did them in pairs, sent them in pairs so they could do life together. So I want to encourage you to stay afterwards and join us for a meal, hang out. It's going to be a great time. And then the last thing, I'm really excited about this coming up because anytime we have an opportunity, right, to pray for our, our state, uh, we want to get together. So the governor's prayer breakfast is right out there at Cedar Gate. If you haven't been to Cedar Gate, it's an amazing place in Lomega. It's about 15 miles away. My friend owns it. But we're going to meet there at 630 in the morning. Yes, I said 630. <laughs> They're going to feed us breakfast. And then we're just going to pray for our state. So I want to encourage you to go online and register for that tomorrow. We're going to have that on our, uh, our Facebook page. So go online and get registered for that. It's going to be a powerful time. And it's not just us. We're going to have other churches that are joining. They're saying the same thing I'm saying right now because we work together for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So we're going to be meeting out there. But I need you to register that. Go tomorrow on Facebook. All right? You guys, it's been a great morning. Love you so much. Bring somebody with you next week. Let us be a church that invites others. Amen? Whoever finds God. We'll see you.